So why brief? Well, first of all, it's a critical transition from planning to execution. We did strong collaboration in our planning phase. We had great conversations about how to make this team better. And we need at some point to make the transition over to execution. We can't continue doing these long meetings where we pontificate about what the team should do. Remember, if you, if you used our planning process, it took you four to six hours to get the team together, to get the buy-in, get their commitment, get the right plan in place. And that chaos of the four to six hour planning session needs to be quickly communicated to the team so we can have a call to action for their execution. Next thing I want to do is connect strategy to activity. When we talk to CEOs, they tell us that our number one challenge, the thing I wish we were better at, is we don't currently connect our strategy to execution. We got this great strategy, we're just not executing it on a day-to-day -day basis. The briefing is a great way to do this. The, the briefing is a great way to show that the planning process we use can actually be translated into activity. Dwight Eisenhower has a great quote that uh, plans are nothing, planning is everything. And what he means by that is the act of planning allows you to build the alignment and the commitment from your team members, but having a plan just in your hand means nothing. We haven't taken any action on that plan until we go into the execution phase, and the brief allows us to do that. Next, I want to compel the team to accountable execution. The key word there is accountable. I want the team to be held accountable for their execution and make sure they have clear ideas of what the roles and responsibilities are going to be for each team member. And then finally, I want to build a common mental model for the group. Here's what I mean by that. I'll give you two examples. One where it hasn't worked out well for teams, and one where it's worked out very well. We'll very often hear from leaders, I don't need to share why this mission is important with the group. They already know that. I don't need to tell the team what they should be focusing on. They already have a clear picture of that. And when I hear that, I, I take the, that leader and I'll, I'll bring them in with a subordinate and I'll say to the subordinate, you tell us why this mission is important. You articulate what you think it is. And after they're done giving their answer, every single time without fail, the leader looks at the subordinate and says, well, that's not quite right. That's almost right, but that's not quite what we're trying to accomplish here. And what that's pointing out is that we don't have a common mental model. We don't have a team that's aligned on what success look, looks like and what our clear plan is to achieve that. Our positive example is when I went down to Disney and worked with their Imagineers, a great innovative team, this group of people who build magic and delight people across the world. And we all know them for their creative capabilities, but behind the scenes, there's a lot of execution and activity that takes place to make them successful. And we're looking at one of their characters, and there's this huge version of the character uh, that they had built. And in front of that was a little tiny version of that character. And I said to one of the Imagineers, what is that? Why do you have the tiny one along with the big one? And he said, well, the tiny version of the character is our visual for what the finished products should look like. That's our small scale model so that we can all align on what success looks like at the end. And he thought about it for a second and he said, you know what, that's pretty close to what our brief your briefing is in the Afterburner Flawless Execution Model. This is what allows us to have a common mental model and stay aligned as a group. This is their version of a brief. That common mental model allows them to execute as one team in a cohesive group. And then finally, it improves performance. If you brief with your team, I promise you it will improve performance for that group. How do I know this? Well, I've flown more than 2,500 missions. I flew with 25 allied countries across the globe. And I can go sit in on any brief in the world without knowing the pilots, without knowing their skill level, listen to the briefing, and I can tell you how well that mission will be flown based on the briefing. If there are any pilots in the audience, I promise you they'd agree with me. They'd say, yep, that's the biggest indicator for how well a mission will be flown, how well the brief actually takes place. The brief allows us to improve performance as a team. This is our opportunity to get that last-minute alignment so that we can go out there with clear roles and responsibilities to execute.